So good morning, my dear students. So this is a video lecture for our module uh, 2.1, which is all about heat exchangers. So the topic would be, we'll just give you a brief introduction, then discuss the different types of heat exchangers, the overall heat transfer coefficients, LMTD, although basically this is taken in our module 1.3 already. And then we'll be solving problems on parallel counter flow heat exchangers, the cross flow and multi-path heat exchanger. Now, just to give you a brief introduction, we define what a heat exchanger is. So it is a device in which heat is transferred between hot and cold substance, usually fluids. And these devices may either have a tubular structure of which a double pipe and shell and tube exchangers are the most common type. Now, we know that the simplest exchangers involve the direct mixing of hot and cold fluids. And most industrial exchangers are those in which the fluids are separated by a wall. And uh, if you have like that, you have conductive and convective heat transfer principles are uh, required to describe and design these units, while, of course, radiation effects are generally neglected. Note that heat exchangers for the chemical, petrochemical, or any petroleum or power industry encompass a wide variety of designs that are available from many manufacturers. And of course, equipment design practice first requires the selection of a safe, operable equipment. Now, as noted from this uh, definition here, which are heat exchangers are devices used to transform heat from a hot fluid to a cold fluid, they are classified then by their functions and in general sense into three broad types which are recuperators wherein hot and cold fluids are separated by a wall and heat is transferred by a combination of convection to and from the wall and conduction through the wall. So examples of these are double pipe and shell and tube heat exchangers. Now recuperators are also termed as through the wall non-storing exchangers. So these are through the wall non-storing exchangers. The second type is a regenerator wherein hot and cold fluid alternately occupy the same space in the exchanger. And the exchanger core serves as a heat storage device. Therefore, when you say regenerators or sometimes uh, termed as accumulators or heat storage exchangers, so this, they store heat. So these are another type of heat exchanger where heat is being stored. So heat storage exchangers. Okay, so commonly used ar arrangement for exchanger core is actually a pack bed. The third type of heat exchanger is what we call as your direct contact heat exchanger. And again, this is a non-storing exchangers. We're in hot and cold fluids, contact each other directly. And a very good example of this is a cooling tower in which a spray of water dropping from the top of the tower comes in contact with a cool stream of air moving upward. I think... Uh, this will be well taken in your unit operations three, okay? Now, we'll discuss about what an overall heat transfer coefficient is. So we know for a fact that during heat exchange operation with liquids or gases, a dirt, either inside dirt or outside dirt, this one, film gradually builds up on the exchanger surface. So this deposit may either be a rust of boiler scale, seal, coke, or any number of things. So its effect, which is referred to as fouling. So the this effect of the dirt or the dirt film that uh, gradually builds up either on the outside wall of the heat exchanger or the inside wall of the heat exchanger. Now, this effect, which is referred to as fouling, is to increase, of course, the thermal resistance. So it will affect the, the R, which results in, of course, decreased performance. So, of course, if you have an increased resistance, your performance decreases. Okay. 
Now, the nature of the rate of deposit is generally difficult to predict. So therefore, only the, the performance of a clean exchanger is usually guaranteed. Now, the scale of fouling is dependent, of course, on uh, the fluid's temperature, the velocity, and to a certain extent, the nature of the heat transfer surface and its chemical composition. So this affects actually the fouling. Now, the effect of resistance of fouling, RF, can be obtained from the following equation that, they, that is 1 over the heat transfer or overall heat transfer coefficient of the dirt, the dirty uh, heat exchanger minus that of the heat transfer coefficient of a clean one. Now, where dirt, the dirt, the overall heat transfer uh, coefficient for design with fouling and U is for the clean, we would then be uh, using the equation U over A is equivalent to 1 over uh, the resistance of the outside, because you have the outside plus resistance of the fouling outside the outside film plus resistance of the wall plus resistance of the inside fouling plus the resistance of the inside. So it's like the outside, the outside film, the wall, the inside film, and resistance inside. And this basically is the overall or, um, resistance or RT. Now, we take note that from your equation 3.2 in uh, unit 3, RT is actually equivalent to 1 over resistance of the outside is uh, HOAO, right? Plus, of course, the resistance of the dirt, outside dirt, is H over DO. AO. Resistance of the wall is the thickness of the wall times K mean area plus again uh, resistance of the inside dirt 1 over HDI AI plus 1 over the inside resistance AI. And this RT then could either be 1 over UOAO or 1 over UI AI. Well, of course, we know that U is the overall heat transfer coefficient in watt per meter squared Kelvin. The HDO here, note that HDO and HDI are the fouling factors. And uh, knowing that your AO is actually pi DO times L, or AI is also pi di times L. And your mean area, the LM mean area here, is pi D log mean times L, pi dm times L. Therefore, from equation 3.3 before, you were able to get that 1 over UO, sorry for that, 1 over UO, therefore, is equivalent to 1 over HO, plus 1 over HDO plus delta XDO over K D log mean plus DO over HI DI plus, oh, if this is for the dirt, it's HI DI. So HI uh, HDI plus DO over HIDI. So let's get this uh, clearly HDI. And same is true if I have 1 over UO, 1 over U, UI, I, I should say. 1 over UI would be 1 over HI plus 1 over HDI delta X 
uh, DIKD logamin plus DI over HD or DO, DIHO, DO. And if we say that your Q, so this is actually basically the equations here. Q is delta T over RT. Therefore, we could derive an equation in terms of either UO over AO. Or this could be delta T over UO, AO. Or delta T over UI, AI. Take note that Q from our equation 3.5 or the heat transport equation is UOAO uh, delta T or UIAI delta T, which is our equation 3.5 from our module 1.3. Okay, note also or never forget that the choice of UO or UI calculation is based on the location of the film with higher resistance, okay? Now, let's discuss about LMTD and heat transfer uh, units or number of transfer units equations. Although basically this one is thoroughly discussed in your module, so we'll just be dealing with your LMTD. Okay, so when you say log mean temperature difference, uh, the derivation of that equation would come from, of course, when we know that when heat is uh, exchanged between a surface and a fluid or between two fluids flowing through an exchanger, say, for example, you have a hot fluid coming in here on the outside of a double pipe heat exchanger and the uh, colder fluid is uh, passing through the in the inner tube the local temperature driving force we have is delta t and usually this varies along the flow path so this effect is treated through the log mean temperature difference approach or what we call as your lmtd now say for example consider an absolute temperature profile of t over tx that is continuous and where t1 P1 is the absolute temperature at some point, say, assuming if I would have at this point, so I think T1 go at X1 and with T2 at X2, by definition, the mean value of the reciprocal temperatures, 1 over T between your X1 and X2 would be equivalent to so your reciprocal temperature which is the mean value of this is equivalent to uh, 1 over T dt from T1 to T2 divided by from T1 to T2 dt. Or we know that if uh, the integral of T2 uh, from T2 T1 of your dt is basically 1 over 1 over T2 minus T1 times the first integral from T1 to T2 of your 1 over T dt. And this gives you, of course, 1 over T2 minus T1 times ln of T2 over T1. And this is you arrive at an equation that is the mean value of the reciprocal of this temperature, T. Oh, wait. That is. Put it clear over here. So that the mean value, the mean value in the reciprocal 1 over t therefore is equivalent to ln of t2 over t1 divided by t2 minus t1. Now, if we say that the reciprocal or the average of the reciprocal is reasonably approximation to the reciprocal of the average. How is that? 
that is the reciprocal average of the reciprocal this average of 1 over t is basically equivalent to the reciprocal of the average t bar therefore we can we could say that if they are equivalent 1 over t average is basically equivalent to ln of t2 over t1 over t2 minus t1 and from here we arrive actually at an equation that is t therefore is equivalent to t2 minus t1 or that is your uh, log mean temperature is equivalent to t2 minus t1 ln of t2 over t1 such that if you have a log mean temperature difference or LMTD in terms of delta T, or that is delta Tm, it is basically delta T1 minus delta T2 over LN of delta T1 over delta T2. So, dito lang yan ang galing. Okay? Now, if we have a, a for shell and tube heat exchanger, we have a modified LMTD. Why it's a modified LMTD? Because we need an evaluation of the Y, or sometimes in some books it's terms, it is termed as FG. This can be found in figure 15, that's 14, page 344 of your thoust, or either figure 10, that's 14, page 10, that's 27 of the handbook. And there are different uh, figures there. One is if I have a one... Uh, shell to tube pass here so this is I think uh, A and then the figure B would give you the two uh, shell for tube passes so this is how you evaluate your um, Y so you have some of the books uses S and which is equivalent to your X in the handbook this one is actually TB2 for shell and tube heat exchanger it's TB2 minus your TB1 over TA1 minus TB1. And your R is TA1 minus TA2 over TB2 minus TB1. And the way we do it is, once you know your X and Z, so your X is your uh, abscissa here. So assuming I have a 0 0.5, 0 0.5 of X, and then my Z is, let's just assume it's 1.2. So you find your Z. This one is a line 1.2. Project the 0.5 up to the time that it reaches 1.2. So around here. And then project it here to get your Y. So that's just how easy. But most of the problems sometimes dito lang siya nagdudwa sa mata. Okay? So anyway, we will be solving problems uh, using this figure later. Okay, so let's have the first problem about parallel and uh, parallel flow heat exchanger. So this is quite simple, uh, included in MRI refresher course for flow of heat and evaporation. So the problem says that it is desired to recover heat from a 10,000 pound per hour of hot water at 350, so you have a 10,000 here pound per hour. By preheating a 10,000 pound per hour also of distilled water from 70 degrees. So same, whether the hot and the cold fluid are both having the same rate of 10,000 per pound per hour. The distilled water is to be ultimately heated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, for a co-current heat exchanger or parallel flow, what is the temperature of the outlet distilled water if the temperature approach at the outlet is uh, of the preheater is about 5 degrees Fahrenheit? So, it has to get T2. So, it's basically uh, what you're given is the approach which is around 5 degrees Fahrenheit. And note that T approach is actually your 
t2 ito t2 minus the small t2 which is 5 degrees Fahrenheit now um, we go back at discussing what is the energy relationships between two uh, fluids that come in contact with so the heat absorbed of course the heat absorbed by cold fluid is actually uh, or given up by the hot fluid may be either a sensible heat causing a temperature change in the fluid or it may be a latent heat causing a phase change such as either vaporization or conden condensation so in a typical waste heat boiler for example swimming line ito you have a hot water or hot fluid gas giving up to water through thin metal tubes separating the two fluids now we we know that the rate of heat transfer between the two streams assuming assuming no heat loss to the surroundings may be calculated by the enthalpy change of either the fluid that is q is equal to the mass of the hot fluid times um the enthalpy of the entering hot fluid. So you have H uh, M. So the mass of the hot fluid times the enthalpy H1 minus your H2, which can be equivalent also to M of the cold, the mass of the cold fluid times the enthalpy of the cold minus. Uh, enthalpy of the living cold fluid HC2. Let's have it as hot one. This is hot two. Okay, such that in this problem, we will uh we are to okay equate the MCP delta T of your hot water which is equivalent to MCP delta T of your cold. No, sabi natin kanina, assuming there's no heat loss to the surroundings. Okay? So since masses are equal, this is 10,000 times, so of course, CP is still 1, both are water, times the change in temperature, that's 350 minus T2, is equivalent to 10,000 times 1 T2 minus 70. This could cancel out. So this gives me 350 minus what's T2 from this. I could use this as a pure equation 1. From equation 1, T2 is actually 5 minus uh, 5 plus T2, small T2. So 5 plus T2 equals 2, T2 minus 70. One equation one unknown, you could solve for T2, that is roughly 207.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's just an outright, actually, substitution of the given. Okay, no sweat. Now, what if we have a counter current flow? That you have 100,000 pounds of water to be cooled from 200 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 by a coolant entering the exchanger at 60 and leaving at 95. Assuming U is 400 BTU per hour feet squared degrees Fahrenheit, we are tasked to determine the heat transfer area required for a double pipe heat exchanger with a counter current flow. And since we are required to um, solve for the area, so we might as well use UA delta T log mean is equivalent to the WCP of the water given T1 minus T2. Okay, so let's get first delta T log mean. Delta T log mean is equivalent to from our previous formula, it's Plus your delta T log mean. It's basically delta T1 minus delta T2. Remember this one. Yeah. Delta T1 minus delta T2 over 
equal m delta t1. Therefore, my delta t log mean would be 200 minus 95 minus 100 minus 60 all over ln of 200 minus 95 over 100 minus 60. And this gives me around 67.4. And then just substitute it in the, the uh, previous equation. UA you are given to be 400 BTU per hour feet squared degrees Fahrenheit. So that's basically 400 times area. Delta T log mean of 67.4 equivalent to the 100,000 rate times per hour of the water times CP of water is 1 times the change in temperature 200 minus 100. So it's just a simple calculation that you get A to be 371 feet squared. Now if we assume, how about if we assume that instead of a counter current flow, you have the heat exchanger operating in parallel flow. Uh, same given, but this time it's parallel flow. So you have, instead of T95 here, you'd be getting So in here you have T1 is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, leaving at T2 to be 95 degrees. And still, the one entering is a hot water at T1 200 and leaving at T2 which is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a parallel flow. Let's solve for the area and compare which one would have a, uh, a better performance or in terms of economy, which one is more effective. So same uh, equation, UA delta T log mean, but this time, medium of a bag for yung delta T log mean natin. So our delta T log mean would be, again, the T1 minus delta T2, so that's 200 minus 60. minus 100 minus 95 divided by ln 200 minus 60 all over 100 minus 95 and you'll get your delta t log mean to be around 40.5 which is way below substituting this in our given equation so you have 400 times the area which is unknown times 40.5 is equal to 100,000 times 1 times it's 200 minus 100 and you'll get area to be quite high almost twice so that's 617 feet squared so if we are to compare here we know for a fact that using counter current flow is more effective in terms of economy because as the cold fluid is leaving, which one is a cold fluid here? This one. As a cold fluid or the one that you are cooling, it actually, this one, as it leaves the exchanger, it is actually in com coming in contact with the highest temperature at 200. And like it all, at 100, you have a, uh, the 95 or add to yung kanina, if it is counter current flow, the 60 degrees that is coming in at 200, lowest in temperature na ma-receive. Ma yeah, so same is true with later when we deal with uh, evaporators, that evaporators that are backward feed as are mostly used if you have a cold feed because the solution leaving the evaporator, the concentrator, meets the highest temperature. Okay, so we deal with the cross flow shell and tube heat exchanger. I think one of the uh, problems given in module 1.3 is this one where you have uh, a double pipe heat exchanger system. 
I'd like to first solve this using a double pi pit exchanger. And then same problem, but this time we, we do it if the given exchanger or the given the exchanger that we're going to use is of the cross flow shell and tube heat exchanger and compare the result. Okay, let's do this one first. So given the following double pipe heat exchanger, you have a water at 40 degrees at 1000 kilogram per hour, leaving at temperature T2 using a one inch 18 BWG or Birmingham wire gauge copper with a uh, outside diameter of 1 inch, inside diameter of 0 0.902, delta x, k, uh, the bigger pipe is a 2 inch schedule 40, having uh, the oil traveling on the outside of the smaller tube is an oil at 570 watt per meter squared Kelvin, H -O and HI for the water is 2 to 70 watt meter squared Kelvin. Okay, we're tasked to compute for the T2, the W, and Q. Okay, using your equation 3.5, your Q is actually, so you go back to your module. This is equation 3.5, module 1.3. Q is equal to U O A O delta T log B is equivalent to your WCP delta T or the sensible heat which is also equivalent to your W lambda or this is your latent heat. Okay, knowing this we would then be equating your UOA or delta T log mean with the WCP of the water which is also equivalent to your WCP delta T of your oil, noting that there's no heat loss to the surroundings. Okay, so if you are going to plot the temperature profile for this, I would have then from 200 degrees for the dub oil, it's slightly came down to around 165 degrees C. While that of the water, which is given at 40 degrees, goes up to an unknown temperature. So I said if I would get the delta D log mean here, I would know that it is 165 minus 40 minus 200 minus the known temperature ln of 165 minus 40 over 200 minus T2. You know W for uh, water to be 1,000 kilogram per hour. The CP is 4184, of course, joules per kilogram Kelvin. Uh, we just need to get for your AO for the water. So for the water, I have 1,000 kilogram per hour given a CP, which is 4184 joules per kilogram Kelvin. The AO would be pi given kind of one inch. So I would have pi times 1.0. That's 0 0.0254 times a length of 5 meters. So you get 0.399 meters squared. Of course, if we neglect dirt, we could use for 1 over UO. Why UO? The resistance is higher with the uh, 570, so we just 1 over UO, which is 1 over HO, plus no dirt, neglect resistance of the dirt or the scale, so we'll have 1 over HDO. What I have is for the wall, we have the XDO over KD log mean, plus again, no dirt inside, so it's just D over HIDI.
Okay. That means that I'll just substitute the given equation 1 over 570. The delta x is 0 0.049 times, of course, 2.54 over 100 because that's given in inch times a 1 inch do all over k 250. So D log mean is 1 minus 0 0.902 all over ln 1 over 0 0.902 plus 1 inch, that's your DO, all over HI is 2270 times 0 0.902. No need to convert since it will just cancel out because I also have 1 uh, inches above. Okay, in the numerator. And then you get you ought to be equivalent to around 444.84. Now, knowing your UO, I could now use this equation. Okay. Using that one, I would have you ought to be calculated as 44. 4.84 UO times the AO that was computed 0.399 times your delta T log mean which is 165 minus 40 minus uh, 200 minus the unknown temperature T2 all over LN 165 minus 40 all over 200 minus T2, which is equivalent to WCP, the 1,000 kilogram per hour, times 4184 CP, T2, minus 40. But you have to uh, change this since it is in joules, 4184 joules, so this would be uh, 1 over 3,600 seconds. And then, since I have T2 here, unknown T2, solve this by trial and error. Knowing, therefore, by trial and error, once you get your T2, and whatever is the value of this T2 here that you will get, you would just substitute it to your WCP delta T of the water. times WCP delta T of the oil to get the value of your W ng lube. So you get W of the oil and then knowing W of the oil, substitute it with your Q to, uh, uh, with your Q is equal to WCP delta T to get finally your Q. Okay, so since you, from from this equation, by trial and error, you will get a value of T2. Substitute the T2 here to get your, your CP in water. So you don't know WCP delta T here. So you could get your W of the oil. Once you know W of the oil, you can substitute it to get your Q. Okay. Now, we go back. What if... The same given, but this time, instead of a double pipe heat exchanger, we'll be using a shell and tube pipe. Okay, so again, T2 is required. So, should we have a two shell, one tube pass heat exchanger here? So, you have water still at 40 degrees, leaving at T2, HO is given to 270, oil is coming in at 200 degrees. And living at 165, having an HI of 570. So again, uh, I'll be using 1 over UI. Because it's the it's the it's the HI which has a higher uh, resistance. So I would have 1 over UI is equal to 1 over HI. Plus, again, neglecting dirt resistance, so that's delta x di 
over KD or min plus DI over HO DO. Substituting all the given, 1 over 570 plus again 0 0.049. times 0.0254 or 2.54 divided by uh, 100 times 0.902 for your di over k of 250 d log mean of 1 minus 0.902 all over ln 1 over 0.902 plus di is 0 0.902 all over 2 to 70 times 1 and you get to have the value you are to be around 463.72 knowing ui i could get ai ai is of course pi di times the length of 5 meters times 0 0.0254 to get that in meters, so you get 0.360 meters squared. Now substituting this in the given equation again for u i, the same as this one. Uh, you would have 463, so that is u i, 0.72 times the area of 0.360 u i a i delta t log mean times that is 165 minus 40 minus 200 minus t2 ln of 165 minus 40 all over 200 minus t2 these are all equivalent to the same 1000 for the water uh, equivalent to 1,000 kilogram per hour, 4184 times T2 minus 40. And since it is kilogram per hour, minus 3,600 seconds. Okay. And then again, what you're going to do, since this is a shell and tube heat exchanger, so we need to evaluate Y or your FG. Now, using your Faust, you get R, or equivalent to X, is equal to 165 minus 200 all over 40 minus 200, and that is roughly 0.219. And your S, or... In the handbook, it is Z. It's 40 minus T2 all over 165 minus 200. Now, since you don't know T2, solve by trial and error method again. What you need to do is, what are the steps? You assume T2, therefore you could get Z. Okay, assume T2. Okay, assuming it's 60 degrees, let's start with 60 degrees C. I can solve for Z, because I know this one already. And Z is to be around 0 0.57. Once I know Z and X from, once you know your X and your Z, you compute for your, or uh, check from the graph, your FG or your Y. So you could get your the value of y. You get the value of y. Once you know y from your UA uh, this time it is UA actually at the bala meron akong y dito na included here. Okay. U a delta t log mean times the correction factor y. So once you know y, you solve for t2 using this equation here. 
using that equation because you know already why. And then, uh, you continue until the T2 assumed would be roughly equivalent to your T2 calculated. Okay. So clear from your X and Z, assume T2, compute for Z from the graph, you get Y, substitute Y here, then calculate T2. The T2 assumed here should be equivalent to the calculate T2 for you to be able to get the exact or the correct uh, T2. Okay? Uh, let's have a multi-pass shell and tube heat exchanger problem. A multi-pass heat exchanger has two passes on the shell side and four passes on the tube side. So in Kanina, this is actually a one shell, two tube pass. This time, we will be dealing with the two shell, four tube pass. It is cooling a petroleum oil inside the tube from 275 to 125 degrees. Water is the coolant in the shell with inlet and outlet temperature of 55 degrees Fahrenheit and 88 degrees Fahrenheit, respectively. The exchanger has 121-inch outside diameter, 16 Birmingham wire gauge tubes, each and 6 feet long. Neglect metal water resistance. The given data are this. This time, we're tasked to get area, HTC correction factor, the dirty load limit, and the heat transfer weight. Okay, so this is a problem. So you have here the water coming in at 25 degrees, then leaving at 88. The oil is coming at 275, leaving at 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the given is, since I have HDO to be 500, and then the HO or the, the H of the water is just 170, note that HI is much, much less, smaller than HO. So I'd be using 1 over UI. Okay, first, we test to get the heat transfer area. You're given 120 tubes. The letter A, the total is 120 tubes. I have a 1 inch outside diameter Birmingham wire gauge uh, of 16 BWG. Sorry for that. Uh, you have 1 inch 16 BWG. From the table, this is how we get it. So I have a 1 inch 16 BWG. The outside diameter is actually 0 0.870 inches. Sorry, I did just did not, I wasn't able to include the header, but you can find it here. That this is your your uh, given diameter. This is your Birmingham mortgage. So one, we are given 1 inch 16 BWG. This is actually your inside diameter DI. What do you remember me BWG? This is the outside diameter in inches. So since I know already that from here I have 0 0.870 inches uh, inside diameter, I could get your AI. AI therefore is pi di times length times the number of tubes or that is pi 0.870 over 12 times 6 feet, I think, 6 feet long, times 120 pieces of the tubes. So that's basically 164 feet squared area. So for letter A. How about in letter B? B, you're tasked to get the overall heat transfer or HTC, since we know that HI is much, much smaller than your HO, you'll be using your UI. That is 1 over UI is equal to 1 over HI plus 
D I H D O D O plus D I over H O D O. Okay, so you have U I therefore is one over one over forty eight. Plus point eighty seven over one seventy times one plus zero point eighty seven over five hundred times one, and you get this to be thirty six BTU per arcit squared degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's your letter B. Letter C, correction factor of Y. Of course, we just need to get your R and the S. And then from uh, the table, this is for tube, uh, two shell for tube pass. So you have to say R is equivalent to 275 minus 125 all over. 88 minus 55, you get this to be 4.55. And your S is 88 minus 55 all over 275 minus 55. Sorry for that. And this roughly will give you 0 0.15. Now from our uh, Figure, I have R to be, or that is Z is equivalent to 4.55. So this is 3, this is line 4, so roughly around here. And then, you have a point 0.15. Point 0.15 is this line. Take note, so this line, very thin line, is your point 0.15. So, it will come across at around this point. So, pag nalingan ng mata, that could just be around 0.985 for your y. So, 0.985. So, you get the value of your correction factor to be 0.985 from the given graph of a 4 tube pass uh, 2 shell. 2 shell pass 4 tube pass. Okay? So this is your y. Okay, letter D, your delta T log mean. Delta T log mean is equivalent to, easy, 275 minus 88. Delta T1 minus delta T2, 125 minus 55, all over ln of 275 minus 88 all over 1 to 5 minus 55. And you could get that to be around 119 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, last is we task to get the heat transfer rate, or that's your Q. In letter E, Q is equivalent to UI AI delta T log mean times the correction factor. We know everything. You know UI AI delta T log mean. All you need to do is uh, plug it into the equation. The UI that we got a while back is 36. One. So it's 36 BTU per R feet squared degrees F. Times the area of 164 feet squared. Delta T log mean of 119 and your Y of 0.985. And then you finally get the value of Q to be 692037B. 
get the other R. Plus fit squared, fit squared, the different height, whole height. So that's your Q. So that's just how simple gate exchanger calculations are. Thank you very much. And the next uh, video lecture that I'll be uploading will be about radiation. Thank you.